Welcome to the second module of the Soot Free and Zero Emission Urban Bus Fleet's Technology Transition Curriculum, where we will be breaking down the technology pathways for you. In today's module 2B, we're presenting zero emission bus technologies. Before we begin, here are some of the key terms and acronyms that we'll come across. Alternating current is an electric current that reverses its direction many times a second at regular intervals. The electricity that we get from household circuits is AC. Motors in electric vehicles also run on AC. Battery electric buses, or BEBs for short, are zero emission buses powered by chemical energy stored in onboard batteries that power the electric motors directly. FCEBs, or fuel cell electric buses, are another type of zero emission buses powered by chemical energy stored in fuel cells. The reaction of hydrogen and oxygen releases energy which recharges the batteries. Direct current is an electric current flowing in one direction only. High voltage DC quick charging is a solution to rapidly replenish depleted batteries. In vehicles, the electricity that comes from the batteries is also DC. Lithium iron phosphate, LFP, is a material commonly used for the cathode of a battery electric bus battery. Replacement ratio is an important metric when planning for zero emission bus technologies. It refers to the number of zero emission buses needed to provide the same level of service as an existing internal combustion engine bus. Reserve ratio is the minimum amount of energy that batteries need to store and set aside to prevent damage and to maintain their warranty. This amount of energy is not available for powering buses. State of charge is the level of charge of a battery electric relative to its capacity. When a battery is fully charged, the SOC will be at 100% and lower when the battery becomes depleted. In the second half of module two, we're going to focus on zero emission powertrain technologies. In today's urban transit bus market, there are two types of zero emission engine technologies, battery electric buses or BEBs and hydrogen fuel cell electric buses or FCEBs. Here are the key learning objectives of this module. Know the two most common zero emission bus technologies, battery electric buses and hydrogen fuel cell electric buses. Learn about major technology components in battery electric and hydrogen fuel cell buses. Understand the performance of zero emission buses relative to baseline internal combustion engines in terms of cost, energy consumption, range, emission, and noise levels. For battery electric buses, Understand the variation in performance for major types of battery cathode technologies, particularly battery life and range. And finally, learn about successful deployments of zero emission bus technologies around the world. Electric buses with batteries as their sole source of power to drivetrain are known as battery electric buses. The diagram here is a simplified schematic of key components of a battery electric bus. The onboard charger receives electricity from an external AC normal charging connector and converts AC to DC power to be stored in a battery. Alternatively, batteries can also be charged using a DC quick charging connector that has a converter inside the charger itself. That means it can feed DC power directly to the bus battery. To power the vehicle, DC power stored in the battery is converted to AC by the inverter to run the electric motor and distribute it to the wheels from the transmission system. A key advantage of electric buses is that there are fewer moving parts than conventional internal combustion engine buses. As we will discuss in later modules, this means reduced maintenance costs for operators. One of the most important metrics of electric buses and sometimes a shortcoming is their range. Range depends on the multitude of factors and modern battery electric buses and can operate anywhere between less than 100 km to more than 300 km on a single charge, depending on the bus model and battery configuration. The range can be calculated in the simply simplified equation shown here. The numerator in the equation is the capacity of onboard batteries. The bigger the battery size, the longer the range, while other things like are held constant. Battery sizes in turn affect vehicle weight and cost. Several factors affect the denominator, which is the bus's energy consumption. The length of bus routes, the duty cycle of the bus operations, 
like road grade and speed and the weather outside. For instance, battery electric buses significantly underperform when the weather outside is cold. But when it's warm, air conditioning can also have an impact on range. In many scenarios, battery electric buses show better energy efficiency and lower fuel consumption compared to conventional diesel and CNG powered ones. The data shown in the graph on the left are from California Air Resources Board testing of different bus technologies under three different distinct drive cycles, central business district, arterial and commuter, and loaded to maximum capacity. In all three test cycles, battery electric buses show much greater energy efficiency compared to diesel buses, with the difference most notable for the low speed CBD test cycle. The graph on the right shows the real world energy consumption of Foothill Transit Agency's line 291, a short route that has an overhead fast charging station installed for on route charging battery electric buses as well as conventional CNG buses. On this route with an average speed of seven miles per hour, the fuel economy of battery electric buses is almost eight times that of diesel or CNG buses. One caveat of battery electric buses is that the real world performance of BEBs is worse than what manufacturers advertise. The numerator and de denominator shown in the previous slides can change and make the actual range smaller than in theory. There are a few ex explanations for this. First, the reserve ratio of batteries, which refers to the minimum amount of energy that batteries must set aside and maintain is required to be at least 10% as the bus cannot be operated until the battery is drained. Also, many buses are equipped with a low precision state of charge indicator for drivers, making it risky to continue operations with low SOC levels. Third, the SOC of the battery drops over time because of battery degradation. As of 2018, manufacturers typically guarantee a SOC of 80% in year eight, which means that in year eight, the batteries will be able to retain 80% of the original energy amount, even if fully loaded. Another reason is that BEBs use significantly more energy when air conditioning or heating is turned on or under extreme driving conditions, such as steep gradients and high speeds. The difference between energy usage with and without air conditioning can be 30 to 40%. To provide the same level of service when the air conditioning is used, operators must realize calculations not based on average energy consumption levels, but based on the highest expected levels of for the summer or winter month. Of course, the limitations with battery life and battery degradation can be mitigated by more careful planning, better driving practices and optimized operations as our future modules on operations would elaborate. If planned and managed well, battery electric buses can have a one-to-one -one replacement ratio to ICE buses. Good driving practices can slow down and ameliorate battery degradation to a certain extent, but some of the lithium ion battery performance onboard battery electric buses is determined by the inherent cathode chemistries. The choice of cathode materials and chemistries have trade-offs in terms of different aspects of performance. The cost, density in terms of mass and volume, safety of batteries, discharge rate, and life cycle. Each manufacturer may choose to use one type of battery cathode to differentiate their products. Most electric bus manufacturers, especially those from China, use lithium iron phosphate LFP batteries. A US manufacturer called Proterra uses lithium titanite, LTO, and lithium nickel manganese, NMC batteries on board their electric buses. A big reason why battery electric buses are so popular and necessary is their environmental benefits. Battery electric buses have zero tailpipe emissions and they cause very little noise pollution too. The figure is from a large scale modeling study for 20 megacities around the world, comparing well to wheel GHG emissions for all bus types and operating conditions. The bottom half of the graph shows how battery electric buses consistently deliver lower well to wheel greenhouse gas emissions than fossil fuel and CNG buses. But the extent of emissions reduction depends 
on the source of electricity, which will differ from city to city and country to country. Battery electric buses, while much better for the environment, are more expensive to purchase compared to diesel and CNG buses. Their significantly higher capital expenditure has been a major hurdle for operators around the world when they plan technology transitions to zero emission bus products. However, if we look at cost from a different perspective, the total cost over the service lifetime of a bus from the net purchase price, infrastructure costs, and costs for operation and maintenance, then battery electric buses are actually less expensive than traditional bus types. This is purely from an economic point of view without accounting for environmental benefits, such as ambient air pollution and greenhouse gas emission savings and reduced noise, which once taken into consideration, will almost surely make BEBs a better overall choice. This framework is known as a total cost of ownership, and we'll dig deeper into the concept of TCO in a subsequent module. Let's take a closer look at the electric buses lower operating costs. Analysis of empirical operations uh, data for Chinese transit buses by the Asian Development Bank shows both big buses as, and small buses can achieve lower energy costs in terms of dollars per kilometer traveled. When the global oil market is in turmoil, having stable energy prices can be helpful for operators to manage their operations and finances. Utility companies will play a part here, either through negotiating with bus operators or government policies to secure lower electricity rates to charge the electric bus batteries. Worldwide, battery electric buses are gaining momentum. China has seen the greatest number of battery electric buses introduced to its urban bus fleet, with Shenzhen being the first city in the world to fully electrify its fleet of more than 16,000 buses. In California, thanks to the California Air Resources Board's innovative clean transit rule, transit operators are beginning to transit, transition their fleets to battery electric to meet the 2040 100% zero emission target. Latin America is currently the new hotspot of accelerated battery electric bus adoption. In major cities from Santiago to Medellin to Sao Paulo, Cities in Europe are also seeing increasing numbers of battery electric buses being added to their transit mix. Now let's move on to talk about the other type of zero emission bus technology, fuel cell battery electric buses. Fuel cell electric buses consist of hydrogen tanks, fuel cells, batteries, and electric motors. The fuel cells use hydrogen stored on board to produce electricity with waste products of heat and water. The electricity charges the batteries, which then power the bus. Hydrogen that powers fuel cell vehicles can come from different sources, including fossil fuels, biomass, and electrolysis of water with electricity. Because hydrogen has a low volumetric energy density, it is stored on board a vehicle as a compressed gas to achieve the driving range of conventional vehicles. FCEB operation is similar to diesel bus operation due to its similar range and fueling approach. There are two common sources of hydrogen. The first is natural gas reforming, where a mixture of hydrogen, carbon monoxide, and a small amount of carbon dioxide reacts with natural gas with steam at a high temperature. Carbon monoxide re reacts with water to produce additional hydrogen. This method of hydrogen production is the cheapest, most efficient, and most common. The second method of hydrogen production is electrolysis, where an electric current divides water into hydrogen and oxygen. These so-called power to hydrogen projects, projects are taking off, where excess available renewable electricity is used to make hydrogen through electrolysis. In electrolysis, typically a, a, around 50 kilowatt hours of electricity is required to produce a kilogram of hydrogen. Like battery electric buses, hydrogen fuel cell electric buses are considered zero emission. The combustion of hydrogen only generates water, so there are no tailpipe emissions from FCEBs. The life cycle greenhouse gas emissions of hydrogen FCEBs will depend on the source of the hydrogen. This graph compares greenhouse gas emissions measured in a carbon dioxide equivalent for on-site gaseous hydrogen production from the two common production methods with gasoline vehicles. 
The analysis shows that fuel cell vehicles using hydrogen from production pathways can have clear carbon reduction benefits versus the baseline 2017 gas gasoline vehicles. The carbon re reduction benefits will be amplified when hydrogen production is generated from renewable sources, such as renewable electricity for electrolysis. For the renewable natural gas, this would be biomass sources of methane, which reduce the feedstock emissions of the natural gas. The table shows data from the U.S. National Renewable Energy Laboratory's analysis of fuel cell buses undergoing trials and demonstrations in the U.S. The right column represents what's theoretically possible and what makes FCEB's technologies attractive, whereas columns under current status are results of a study done by the National Renewable Energy Lab using empirical data from demonstration projects of FCEBs in the United States until July 2018. We can see that fuel cell electric buses have an ad advantage when it comes to fuel economy, 1.2 times better than hybrid and more than 1.5 times better than both diesel and CNG. The drawback for fuel cell electric buses is higher total cost per mile due to higher unscheduled maintenance and labor costs that will likely go down as technology improves. California Fuel Cell Partnership reports that based on invoices from one hydrogen fueling station supply, liquid hydrogen is being delivered for about $9 to $10 per kilogram. This is equivalent to $4 to $5 per gallon of diesel. Of course, technology will evolve and costs will go down. But as of, as of now, FCEB bus and infrastructure costs are higher than diesel buses and battery electric buses. In the United States, an electric, a fuel cell electric bus costs around 1 million US dollars. To date, fuel cell electric buses are not as commercialized as battery electric buses, and their deployments and testing have mostly been in the United States. China's vast number of zero emission vehicles are overwhelmingly battery electric, and the central government's 14th five-year plan is just making hydrogen fuel cell supply chain a national industrial priority. The cost of hydrogen fuel cell buses is still higher compared to battery electric buses, and supporting infrastructure is under development. We will learn more about hydrogen fuel cell infrastructure in the next module. Finally, electric trolley buses are arguably not a new technology, as they have been around for many years. The image on the left is the first trolley bus of Siemens in Berlin, Germany in 1882. On the right is a trolley bus running on Reading Transport's main line from the three turns to the bear in Tilehurst, seen at the three turns terminus in 1966. Compared to battery electric buses, trolley buses have advantages in range, the ability to operate on steep slopes, a smaller battery pack for more passenger load, and are more tolerant in both hot and cold climates. But trolley buses' operational coverage and flexibility are very limited by trolley bus pantographs and overhead catenary. Modern electric trolley buses today may carry batteries of 40 to 120 kilowatt hours, allowing for an autonomy range of 20 to 50 km without a catenary, overcoming the challenge with old trolley buses. The image on the bottom left is um, Yutong's dual-powered electric trolley bus delivered to Mexico City in 2019 December. Here are today's takeaway messages. Better electric buses have better fuel economy and energy efficiency performance compared to diesel buses. Better electric buses have zero tailpipe emissions of ambient air pollutants and GHG, while well-to-wheel well GHG savings depend on the source of energy. Battery electric bus range is limited by battery technology and affected by operations and degradation. While initial purchase price of battery electric buses and hydrogen fuel cell electric buses are high, their total cost of ownership is lower than the conventional diesel buses. Hydrogen fuel cell electric buses also have zero tailpipe emissions. Both battery electric buses and hydrogen fuel cell buses require additional infrastructure. Battery electric buses are more readily available than fuel cell electric buses. Research and development of this curriculum is supported by Climate and Clean Air Coalition, International Climate Initiative, and partnering for Green Growth and the Global Goals 2030. If you have any questions, please reach out to me at y.xia at the icct.org. Thank you.